finally, I would like to talk about regulation of program death or apoptosis. This process is responsible for balancing cell proliferation, proliferation and maintaining constant cell numbers in tissues undergoing cell turnover. It is also a defense mechanism against virus-infected cells and damaged cells. During development, cells no longer necessary uh, or unwanted uh, are eliminated by, by apoptosis and regulation of apoptosis is mediated by the integrated activity of a variety of signaling pathways, some acting to induce cell death and others to promote cell survival. As for the proteins involved in apoptosis, we must think about caspases. They all have cysteine residues at their active site and cleave after aspartic acid residues in the substrate protein. They are the ultimate effectors of apoptosis, cleaving more than 40 different target proteins. Caspase activity is regulated by the BCL2 family, and some members of this family promote apoptosis while others inhibit it. Promotion of apoptosis involves mitochondrial damage, cytochrome C release, and caspase activation. Let's talk about the cell death receptors. Some secreted polypeptides signal apoptosis by activating receptors that directly induce cell death. These mo molecules belong to the tumor necrosis factor family and the best characterized member of this would be FAS. And we can see FAS in this picture. So I would like to just summarize what we've talked about today. Uh, regarding signaling molecules and their receptors. First, the modes of cell-to-cell -cell signaling. We talked about endocrine, paracrine, and autocrine. And we talked about the steroid hormones and steroid receptor superfamily. Then we talked about nitric oxide and carbon monoxide. And that is paracrine signaling molecules, which are important in the nervous system. And then we discussed neurotransmitters, which are hydrophilic uh, they do not enter the cell. They carry signals between neurons or neuron, uh, neuron to neurons or to other cell types and often bind to ion channels. Then we talked about peptide hormones and growth factors, which is the widest variety of signaling molecules, and the eicosanoids, paracrine and autocrine, aspirin, and how um, aspirin inhibits their function. So we should also talk about the function of cell surface receptors, and it's very important uh, for our understanding of the whole system. And we should remember about G protein coupled receptors, that they transmit signals to intracellular targets via the intermediary actions of G proteins. Receptor protein tyrosine kinase this is the receptor for most growth factors. Remember, if there's a question asking what is the receptor for most growth factors, it would be receptor protein tyrosine kinase. And we also talked about pathways of intracellular signal transduction. The CAMP pathway, which is important an important second messenger which mediates the response to a variety of hormones and odorants. Most of, the, of its actions are medi mediated by protein kinase A, which phosphorylates both metabolic enzymes and the transcription factor CREB. How about phospholipids and calcium? We talked about RAS, RAF, and MAP kinase, which are involved in phosphorylation of cytosolic and nuclear proteins, including transcription factors. And finally, signal transduction and the cytoskeleton. We must remember about the about integrins and signal transduction. They bind to the extracellular matrix and stimulate protein kinases and other downstream signaling. And about the regulation of actin. Growth factors induce alterations in cell movement and shape by remodeling the actin cytoskeleton. And finally, regulation of programmed cell death, which we just talked about, 
which is by caspases and apoptosis. So thank you very much for this section. We talked a lot about cell signaling in this section and I think we had a very good summary there. So I think we should be able to remember this all very well for your test.